to the SCS Roundtable. I'm Leanne McIntyre, the manager of the Education Channel. This program is part of a series of panel discussions with district and community leaders. Our talks center on strong partnerships between the school district and our community, making Sarasota a much better place to live and learn. So, in today's discussion, we're going to be talking about the special Sarasota County election on March 25th, which will include the district's request to continue a one mill property tax. Now, this one mill was approved in 2002 and in 2006 and in 2010. So joining me today are Superintendent Lori White, Chairwoman of the School Board Jane Goodwin, and our additional guest John Craner, a national recognized business leader who is a volunteer as chairman of the school district's financial advisory committee. So welcome everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Lori, I'm going to start with you before we get into the conversation of money, and let's talk about student achievement in education. So where where do we stand? How are our elementary, middle school, and high school students with our benchmarks? Are we meeting the benchmarks? Are we surpassing those benchmarks? Let's, let's let the community know how our children are doing. Well, our students are doing very well as measured by the FCAT in reading, mathematics, and writing. In fact, with the latest assessment last year, our, we ranked third in the state when you compiled all that FCAT data. And if you look at the last four years and look at the difference between how our students perform in reading and mathematics compared to the state averages, the gap has actually increased. Um, the level of rigor has increased, so everyone's scores were really, um, they took a little bit of a dip because we had higher standards. But even with those higher standards, the difference has increased during the last four years. So I think we're very proud of those achievements. And when you really drill down to comparisons to specific districts, mm -hmm. um, our scores are typically 10 to 15 points higher. Um, and we rank as much as the top six in writing, we're in the top th of three in comparison to all other districts. On a national measure, such as the SAT, you see a similar pattern. Our students do very well in compared to both state averages and national averages, significantly above those scores. Mm -hmm. So I think on multiple measures, we're proving that our students are achieving at a very high rate. Very good. Uh, and I'm going to kind of go off a little off topic. So, so John, to the business community, if you hear something like that, how well our students are meeting benchmarks and surpassing, what does, what does that tell our business community? Well, uh, the business community looks for a lot of things when they're trying to relocate or add to their existing uh, facilities. But one of the things they look for is a very sound uh, and reliable educational system. And if you think about it, uh, the businesses want to have educated workers. They want to have well-developed uh, people, and they look to the, the school system to provide that. Mm -hmm. When we go out and talk to, for example, Chamber of Commerce members and ask them what they value about Sarasota, one of the things they almost always mention is they value the school system because they know that their workers' children are getting a good education. Mm -hmm. And Laura, you've been with the district uh, for quite some time, so you know historically how we're doing. Um, would you say that we are continuing on that upward swing? I mean, well, I think you know this district has always done well, but um, you know we've been in that upper quartile. But we've really only recently hit the high marks, those high benchmarks, just in the last four to five years. So mm -hmm. I think that is demonstrating a continued improvement, where even with um, the wonderful community that we have and the parents that really support this uh, school district, um, even with that, we are outperforming where we were previously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jane, on a, on a more national level and as our, our, our board chairwoman, um, what are, what are some information that you have on that or some of your, your thoughts about our district? Well, in terms of Florida, how Florida ranks per capita in income, we rank 25th in the country. Uh, and when we look at how we rank in teacher salaries, the state ranks about 44th in, mm -hmm. the, in the country. Mm -hmm. We started this referendum in 2002, Leanne. We had a shortage of teachers. Um, Lori and the district were recruiting teachers from all over the country. 
uh, and certainly helping to find referendum dollars that would promote better salaries for those teachers enabled us to go out and be more competitive mm -hmm. on a national level as we were doing at that time as well as on the state level and we've continued to make that a priority. Mm -hmm. We have more teachers uh, with master's degrees and higher than any other school district in the state and we feel this is very important for our students. Mm -hmm. Would you address for the um, for our viewers, Lori, that that importance of how do we find the best teachers? Uh, how do we get those with accreditation to to come here? Well, I tell you, the quality of the teacher is the single most important element of really having that improved student achievement, and particularly in some of those certification areas. Even now, um, it's highly competitive in the STEM areas, foreign language. So to have people looking to our district for its reputation in terms of the quality support that we provide, the tools and professional development we give our teachers, and the compensation. Mm -hmm. Those are critical elements. And we have many individuals looking to Sarasota County over all other districts in the state of Florida because of those elements. That keeps us competitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many parents look at our district in the same way. When they relocate, as John mentioned, they're looking at relocating both their business mm -hmm. and their family mm -hmm. to a district that offers a lot of opportunities for their students. And the rich uh, functionality that we have in this district of offering special needs, of offering a school for gifted, and everything in between mm -hmm. uh, gives so many parents uh, that 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 interest in, in our edge, if you will, in, right. in looking at relocating here. I was talking to a couple of people yesterday who said, we came here because of the schools, mm -hmm. and that happens mm -hmm. very frequently. Because mm -hmm. we're really not just a community of reti retired no. people anymore. We have a, a lot of younger uh, families moving uh, to the Sunshine State. Why, why wouldn't they? Right. And it's up again, so we are, we're really... Mm -hmm happy that we do have more people coming to Florida again mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the dip in the recession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, so John, to the we spoke a little bit about the business, but again, so besides a strong um, school district being important to the students and parents, how else is a strong school district important to the community? Well, as a source of employees, for, for one thing. For example, uh, we have um, a, a, a vibrant economy, but we also have a need for people to fill jobs in our community. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you that every employer wants to have the smartest, most dedicated, most focused employees they can possibly get. Mm -hmm. and, and those employees, hopefully, are products of our local school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we keep our ear to the ground in working with and forming partnerships Indeed. with those people yep. in the industry. A good example of that is at our Technical Institute, mm -hmm. where last year the Chamber, the Manufacturers Association, and others said we need a machinist course, which we had mm -hmm. given up about five years ago with their guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said we need to put that back in, and we were able to react very quickly. We were building a new building. We were able to redesign the room. And today we have uh, many, many happy students who are in their first year of this training where manufacturers in Sarasota and Manatee County have told us that they'll be able to hire all of those individuals next June. And if you read an article in the paper recently, manufacturing is up in Sarasota right. and Manatee yeah. County. Right, right. Um, so, Lori, let's, let's get into funding formulas and money and the more specifics of it. So... Um, Florida is very different in how it um, allocates funding for public education than people who move here from other states. Um, so why is it that the, the school district needs additional funding um, on top of what the state formula says we will get from the state? Well, you've seen from Jane's statistics, the state the state of Florida does, ranks very poorly in comparison to states across the country in terms of their per student um, allocation of funding. The Constitution in Florida says you will fund an adequate education. And I guess by some definition, um, what the state of Florida provides is 
an adequate education, and I think we're looking for more. Mm -hmm. We're looking for higher quality. We want to be competitive, so we want teacher salaries to be minimally the best in Florida. Florida doesn't rank very well with the country, but we want to at least be the top in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but we want more than that. Um, we want a longer instructional day than is typically affordable. Um, in the state of Florida. We have 30 more minutes and we've added using referendum dollars. That's the equivalent of 14 more days of instruction. We know that has a positive impact on instruction, particularly with the quality that we're providing during that additional 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure even during the difficult times of the recession that we sustain quality programs including art music programs, drama, dance, um, and some of those choices that are within schools, the IB, the AP, the ACE um, programs, all of those types of programs, the VPA, our mm -hmm. magnet programs, we really have been able to sustain those programs because of these additional dollars. If you look at our class size data, it actually shows our class size lower and that um, is really because we have sustained programs even if they don't meet those, if they're lower in terms of student enrollment. Many of those programs across the state have had to be cut. Cut. Partur uh, particularly when you look at, mm -hmm. over the last few years, the funding decreases that the recession has caused. Mm -hmm. So I think we've been able to weather through some really difficult years sustaining quality programs because of these additional dollars. Right. We had some flexibility that other counties that didn't have the referendum dollars, uh, uh, which enabled us to, to weather the cuts of about two billion dollars in education. We received some of that funding back, but it was categorical. It went to a great a part of it went to teachers' raises and mm -hmm. to increasing our responsibility for the retirement system mm -hmm. this past year. Uh, but uh, we're still underfunded compared to what we were in uh, six years ago. So we have cut our budget, our operating budget, 124 million dollars. We have cut staff a great deal. Uh, in, in regard to that money, that and, and we've mm -hmm. cut most of our support staff out. Mm -hmm. So our teachers mm -hmm. are doing more, mm -hmm. our students are doing more, our staff is doing more, and I think it's amazing. We have, you know, about 199 support staff administrators, if you will, and that's a very low ratio uh, compared to what most school systems would be with 4,900 employees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, you, you, with talking about the variety of programs that we're able to offer and talking about what employers are looking for, which certainly being able to read and write and do math is important, but there's that problem solving and creative aspect, isn't there, John, that they get from these other classes? Are they not just as important? They are, if you look at the STEM, so-called STEM mm -hmm. uh, subjects. Uh, and obviously the school uh, system is working to, to expand those. Mm -hmm. But I would also say that um, by, by virtue of the funding that has been put in place in our school system through the referenda in the past, we have substantially enhanced the quality. For example, you're talking about creative problem solving. S art and music contribute to creative problem solving. And the very first referendum fundamentally was based on providing ongoing art and music. Uh, you, you continue on, and the next referendum uh, was uh, an, a half an hour more of instruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have more learning going on. And, and one of the great things I think about this referendum is that it is targeted towards specific needs and enhancements in our school system that make ours a better school system. Mm -hmm. And from a business standpoint, give us a much more educated and much more capable workforce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is money that we can place, that, that Mrs. White can place <coughs> where it's needed. Whereas so many things from the state, this state is the second most restricted and most guided from the state level state in the country, second to Hawaii, in terms of restrictions and statutes and the laws that we have applied to us. Right. And many of these things, many of our funds come with strings attached so they can only be used for certain things. And these are things that Mrs. White can use at will in the areas that she sees the need to support and mm -hmm. to assist. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been a wonderful, mm -hmm. so we have we have worked hard at maintaining the 
art music, the longer day, but also being able to supply some assistant principals that we wouldn't have otherwise and some guidance counselors and some of the support staff. Mm -hmm. In addition, we have science teachers at the elementary level that work in mm -hmm. a lab situation for that hands-on science experience, which predominantly across the state, it's very difficult to have that foundation skill set using hands-on science laboratory experiments um, with a teacher that's really focused and knowledgeable about that area. So that's an example. We also have at every one of our schools a purchased with the funds of the referendum a technology support person. We have really had an investment in technology tools for our students and our teachers, but those tools have to keep working. We can't have a teacher do a work order and hope it gets fixed next week for it because those are a primary means of delivery of instruction. We need someone on site at every school to help with that troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. Referendum funds provide that support. Mm -hmm. And we have 52 schools including charter schools. And charter schools are supported by the referendum as well. Mm -hmm. And in that, the school system, we have about six, uh, 60,000 devices that our IT department has to maintain. And, and as we know today, is the digital age. So we use these devices. We use this technology in everything we do. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a big, a big um, and important piece important of our tool, district and how students right. learn. And it's not just the equipment. No. As you said, you, exactly. you, 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 it trickles down to everything else mm -hmm. needed to keep that keep that going, so that students mm -hmm. continue to learn. Um, I want to um, skip ahead a little bit here. Um, what would the impact be um, if the referendum uh, were not to pass? So what are, what are some of the thing, things, very specifically this time around, that we're saying we're going to use the referendum dollars for, and thus, what would we not be able to do? What are we going to lose if we don't have those additional dollars? Well, the referendum brings a, bit, a little over 40 million, about 41 million, to our budget each year. And if we would lose that $41 million, um, there are restrictions now that really weren't in place in 2002 in terms of class size. Um, so you, we can't just simply add a few more students to our core classes because if there's restrictions now and how many students are in those classes. So we'd have to look at those programs which have lower enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd have to look where the certification allows for us to reduce and uh, it's likely that the arts would begin to be hurt by that guidance counselor ratios. But at the end of the day, there are not sufficient cuts that we could make in terms of personnel that we would have to look at salaries. Mm -hmm. That likely would be the end of the additional 30 minutes. The impact of that is not just the loss of 14 days of instruction, it's the loss of us having that additional period at the high school level, which really prevents our high school students from taking all the elective courses that we really feel are so critical to them having a well-rounded education. So I don't like to think about it very often, <laughs> no. uh, but I suppose uh, it's something that you have to prepare for, mm -hmm. um, but it would be devastating and would have a significantly negative impact on the workings of this district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jane, thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I can't add very much to that. Okay. It would be absolutely devastating. <clears throat> and as John has said, it's uh, in looking at this from a financial advisory committee, uh, you know, it would be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we getting, is the community getting a good return on its investment? I mean, if we're going to talk dollars dollars and cents, you know, I'm giving you so much money, is, is my investment worth it? Uh, I think absolutely. Uh, but, but there's more to it than just a, a general idea, are we getting what we ask for? Lori has made mention of, of arts and uh, music. And, and the community said, we want to maintain arts and music in our curriculum, even with class size limitations. Mm -hmm. And that's what the first referendum went to fund. And the same thing has been true all along. It's always been what the community has asked for, that for the most part, the monies have been expended to, to deliver. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it, to put it in very simple terms, very simple financial terms, on an operating budget of roughly 400 million bucks, you're gonna lose 10%. And I don't know of very many organizations that can take a whack Mm -hmm. of 10% off the top and continue to deliver excellence or even reliable mm -hmm. results. Mm -hmm. 
And we know what art and music does for students. It creates that creativity function. The right brain is engaged. And the things that we need in teamwork and collective uh, imaging and managing and learning and, um, and creating in a classroom and then into industry or to the college level, the career level, um, that can't be matched. And, and if youngsters don't engage uh, that creativity aspect at a young age, there are some um, folks that believe they never engage it the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's the fun. That's where their heart is. So I talk to children every day and I ask them what they like. This morning I attended an alternative school graduation triad right here uh, at SCTI. And in that we had steel drums. We have a steel drum group and they're learning steel, steel drums uh, by ear and how to play music, some of these students. Uh, from a retired band director at Riverview High School, and it was wonderful. I thought I was aboard a ship, but it's a it's a it's a great and a and a a wonderful piece of this magic component, and it's helping these students who normally don't have music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to to get another aspect mm -hmm. in and this special school, which once they graduate they can go back to be mainstreamed in right. their regular school. So it was really great to see this. Right. And if we talk about students, you mentioned high school students especially, there becomes an age when, when they start to lose interest in education. And so many studies and so many students will tell you what keeps you coming back to school. Um, it might be a special teacher. It might be the guidance counselor. Football. Band. Band, the art class. So all those things that nationally and historically get cut because we're going to just focus on math and reading and, and science and all those other mm -hmm. things that keep students engaged and in, in the classroom uh, disappear. And as you said, Sarasota County voters over and over, it's an arts community, have said, no, this is, this is very important um, to us. Um, uh, wrap up a little here for the, for the community because there's often confusion. So we're talking about a one mill property tax. And at the beginning of the show, I said it was approved uh, three times before. So is this a new tax? Are we increasing people's taxes? What is this that we're talking about? It's not a new tax, it's an extension. Um, but, and it means basically for every $100,000 of assessed value, um, it's $100 that would go to the school district stays locally for these types of purposes. Mm -hmm. um, there is oversight of those expenditures mm -hmm. done through the through financial, financial advisory committee. Um, and so for really a fairly limited investment of each member of this, or property owners in this community, um, I think there's a tremendous return. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an expectation and a pride that that this community has in its school district. Mm -hmm. um, if you look back at 2010, it passed at the level of 66% during really dreadful economic times mm -hmm. because our community expects more of us and we accept that challenge, but they're willing to then invest more in the school district to get that um, type of return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that was that's also a key point is that it's it stays local. Uh, many don't understand that. Well, my property taxes already pay for education, but that goes to the state, and then, as you said, gets distributed for adequate education through the state. So uh, the money stays here; it's used here; it goes back into the system, and it has flexibility, and flexibility that we need. Use it that the superintendent needs in running a district based on what the criteria is at that given time. Right. But I, you know, I, I hope people will vote. It's March the 25th. Mm -hmm. Early voting will start two weeks before that. Absentee mm -hmm. ballots will be going out the middle of February. Mm -hmm. It's a special election. Uh, and we hope that people will get out and vote. That's all we can ask is mm -hmm. get out and vote. Yeah. And uh, we will be um, you know, involved in the community and talking to the community until that time. Very good, very good. And register to vote. Do we? What's the deadline? February twenty fourth. February twenty fourth. Yeah. Register to vote. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. We are out of time. I mean, we could talk and talk and talk and talk. I'm sure on this topic. But thank you very much. Any last? 
Well, just thoughts? want to let everyone know that if they want detailed information on how the monies were expended, if they want a copy of the report that Certainly. the Financial Advisory Committee um, gave to the school board, just go to our homepage, www.sarasotacountyschools.net, and yep. there's a tab on the left-hand side of the home page that says referendum information. Click on that and there's a lot of information there to become educated. Every number you can want. <laughs> and the Financial Advisory Committee reported to the school board on, on the efficacy mm -hmm. of this most recent version of, of the uh, uh, millage. And what we came out saying was, there's no way we can prove that we would be terrible without it but we don't want to find out because there's a very good chance we would be much less good at what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jane? Anything? I think you've done a great job with the show and, and as I say, thank you so much for, for the show and for getting this information out to our right. viewers. Great. Thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you viewers. We'll see you again here at the round table. <laughs>